Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to see how to show or hide the line item pricing on your invoices, whichever one you want. If you want to show them, we'll show them. If you don't want to show them, then don't show them. It's okay. It's, it's all right. <laughs> we'll see how to do that in your Microsoft Access database. Today's question comes from Ivan in New Jersey, one of my Platinum members. And, and yeah, I, I'm done trying to pronounce all your town names and city names because I get them wrong and then I have, have to hear about it in the comments. Oh, you're pronouncing it wrong. Okay, fine. Ivan from New Jersey. <laughs> uh, he says, how can I make my invoices and access show prices for each thing we sell, but also hide those prices when I need to? Like if I want to give the customer a summary invoice without all of the details of what each line item costs. Can I do that in the same report or do I need to make two different ones? Well, if you're a beginner, making two invoices is the easiest way to do it. Just make one with and one without the line item prices. But with a teeny tiny little bit of VBA programming, you can use the same report and just hide them based on whether you want to show those or not. So in this video, we'll do it the proper way. This will be a developer video. What does that mean? That means if you haven't done any VBA programming yet, go watch this video. It's easy. It's about 20 minutes long. It teaches you everything you need to know to get started. Make sure you understand how to use if then statements. And if you have not yet watched my invoicing video, go watch this. I teach you how to make the order form, the order detail form, and the invoice report that we're going to be using in today's video. These are all free. You can watch them on my website, on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and then come on back. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here we have customers, and customers can have orders with order details, and each of those can produce an invoice. Now, in the invoice that we have right now, you can see we've got the quantity, the unit price, and the extended price right there. You might not want to see all this detail for every invoice that you print. I've worked with a lot of companies in the past where they like this so that they can generally put together a rough outline of what something's going to cost, but they don't necessarily want the customer to see all these details. And in fact, what one customer used to do is he'd generate this and then he'd put a labor item in here and that's where he would use, he'd use this as like his fudge factor to put in, you know, how much extra he wanted to mark it up or if he wanted to put a discount in here and that way the user didn't know exactly what the user the customer didn't know exactly what all the details were but he got the total price now like i said it would be totally possible to make a copy of the order invoice right take this guy here make a second one call it you know order invoice no line item pricing and just delete these fields from it right if you're a beginner and then you can just make a second button in here that says invoice no line item pricing and just print that one up but the trouble with that is in the future, if you decide to make enhancements and upgrades and changes to this thing, you got to do it in both of those. And I hate having to do that. I don't want to you know, keep track of maintaining two separate invoice reports. So really, all we have to do is just add another field to our table and our form so we can track whether or not you want to print the line item totals for this invoice. That way, each invoice you can keep in here separately. Some you might want to, some you don't want to. And then what we'll do is we'll just hide these things depending on the value of that field. All right, so let's start off with putting a field in our order table, this guy, design view, and we'll put in here something like, let's call it uh, show line pricing, like that. All right, that'll be a yes, no value. I'm going to set the default value to yes. Let's, and of course, this is completely up to you. These are your Legos. Put them together however you want. If you like to show the details on most orders that you print out, then set that to yes. If you hide them most of the time, leave it no. That's completely up to you. All right, let's save that. Control S and go in here and obviously set the ones that you want to see the line item pricing for as true. If you've got lots of them, you'll have to use an update query, right? If you don't know about update queries, there you go. There's a video. All right, so let's close this. Let's go back to our order form. All right, bring up uh, the design view here and we'll need to add that field to our order form i'm just going to make this a little bit smaller and let's just copy this is paid right copy paste we'll slide it maybe down here and we'll call this guy control source is show line pricing move this up so you can see it better 
We're going to copy that and paste it in the name field too. So it's called the same thing, right? Control source is where it gets its data from. Name is the name of this box itself. And I like them to be the same most of the time. All right, let's save that. And then we'll just change the caption here too. Show line pricing. That can be whatever you want it to be. All right, let's save that, close it, reopen it again. Now, with that off, when I open up my invoice, I want these fields here to hide themselves if this is no, okay, or false. So how do we do that? Well, a little tiny bit of VB code. All right, here are the fields we're most concerned with. We'll deal with the labels later, right? These guys here, the unit price and the extended price are in the detail section, okay? Now, on a form, we have something called the on current event. The on current event runs when you move from record to record, when you open the first record up, that kind of stuff. It's called the on current event. You can learn more about that here. Well, in a report, we have something called the on format event. If you open up the properties for the details section, go to events, you'll see on format, right? That is code that writes as that section is being written, as it's being displayed on the screen or printed or whatever. It's called on format. So we're going to go into here. All right, dot, 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 bring up the builder event. There's our VBA code builder, right? We're in the detail format section. We're going to say if show line pricing, then do some stuff, else do some other stuff. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to say if I want to see the line pricing, we're going to say unit price dot visible equals true and extended price dot visible equals true. Those are the names of those two fields. Those two text boxes, right? Otherwise, we're going to set that equal to false. Okay. Save it. Let's come back to our report. Let's close that and open the report back up. And oh, well, oh, look what happened. I got variable not defined. What, what does that mean? Variable not defined. That means that the report has no idea what show line pricing is. Now, now wait a minute though. Isn't that a, that's a field in the table under the report, right? What's going on here? Let's stop. And by the way, this is one of those good examples of why it's usually a nice idea to hit debug compile. Here, watch this. All right, debug compile, and it would have caught it right away. That's why I always say throw in a debug compile. Now, usually with forms, you can get away with not having the control as, you know, on the form itself, as long as it's in the underlying record set, as long as it's in the table or query that's underneath the form, right? Now this report gets its data from order invoice queue. And if we look at order invoice queue, you'll see that it's right there. Show line pricing, see? And for forms, that's usually good enough, but you know what? It's not for reports. Reports really want that control to be on the report itself. Otherwise it's gonna give you that. There's no idea what you're talking about. So we're going to go to report design and add existing fields and we're going to find that field right there show line pricing drag it drop it somewhere up here in the report header is fine because remember the report header is stuff about the entire report itself as long as it's on here somewhere it's fine i'm going to delete the label and i'm going to take this box here and i'm going to go to format and make it not visible because we don't care to see it but we just have to have it on here somewhere okay all right now save it close it close it and open it back up again and there we go look at that and now it's working see and now we don't see those prices over there let's do the same thing with the labels now the labels right here when we made these labels unfortunately we didn't give them good names it's just label 15 label 17 whatever they're called so first thing is let's give them good names okay so this is going to be the unit price label and this guy will be the extended price label. Extended price label. Label. I could type today, right? Now, they're in the page header. So guess what? We have to put that in the page headers format event. Right there, right? Dot, dot, dot. And look at this. Now watch, watch this trick. You ready? We're just going to take this stuff up here. We're going to copy that. We're going to paste it down here. And then we're just going to change this to label. Just like that. I'm going to copy that right there. Right? Copy label. Paste it, paste it, paste it there, paste it there. All right, debug compile. And by the way, earlier, 
I, I intentionally typed this in all caps because I knew what was going to happen. But one key that would have given it away is if you did uh, if show line pricing and just press, you know, and then, and then press enter, that wouldn't have capitalized itself because the the automatic camel casing. Now it does, of course, because we added it. All right, save that. Debug compile, always a good idea. All right, we're good. Come back over to here. We're going to close that, close that, open her up, and there go the labels. See? Now, it looks kind of funky having this empty space over here. So what I like to do is if you're going to be doing this with your stuff, I'm going to move over the products like this, right? And then we're going to put the, oh, I moved the line too. Hang on, undo. Don't move that line. Let's move over quantity first. Quantity. And we'll slide them over here. And then we'll take this. I'm going to hold the shift key down. Shift, click, click. And then we're going to drag those over this way. And then we'll just left align this stuff, right? Make sure you're left aligned, left aligned, save it, close it, and now you've got your quantities over on the left, and that looks a lot better, right? Could you have it both ways? Yeah, you could. You could put two quantity fields on here. If you want the quantity to still be over here when you do show the pricing, just I would put two quantity fields on here and just show whichever one you want to show, right? You can even move these fields with VB code. There's all kinds of stuff you can do, folks. But this is a whole lot better than trying to make two reports and then maintaining two separate reports. Now, if you want to learn more about this invoicing stuff, I spend a lot of time over the course of my expert and developer lessons working on invoicing and order entry. I just picked I just picked expert level 10 because it's just one of them. But there's uh, it's one of the main themes of my entire course is building a database that you can use to run a small business, especially a, uh, a retail business, that's the one that I use because I think most people can kind of get that concept of like the lemonade stand, right? A normal retail type business. But invoicing is a lot of it. We spend a lot of time working on this. And even in the extended cut for my invoicing video, which is available for members, we cover a lot of other cool stuff. For example, I'll show you how to set up a product list where you got your list of products. And then when you go to make orders, right, you can then pick a product and then hit add and add it to the order like that. It's all kinds of extra cool stuff we do in the extended cuts for the members. But there you go. That's how you can show or hide the pricing for your line items and your invoices in your Microsoft Access database. That's your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long, 
You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.